If you have ever been in a virtual meeting, which you probably have, you've probably noticed that there are some do's and some don'ts of virtual meetings. And so in this video, I'm gonna share some do's and don'ts of virtual meetings that will leave your teams feeling like this and not like this at the end of your Zoom call or whatever other platform you're meeting on. I'm Chad, and I get to work with some of the smartest leaders and educators on the planet and some of the highest performing companies and universities to help them make virtual engagement easy. And so in this video, I'm not gonna hold back. I'm gonna share everything that I know. And without further ado, let's just get into it. Number one. Design for contribution, don't design for consumption. So often our virtual meetings take a nosedive before they even begin because we design them for people to just passively sit there and consume and take in information. And that is really hard to do for an extended period of time while you're just staring at a screen with this pixelated talking head. And so uh, one of the easiest ways to design for contribution, not consumption, is to start off your meeting with a question. Create some connection before content that allows people to connect to purpose and to each other right at the outset of your meeting, or at least in the first five to 10 minutes of your meeting. Number two, do set expectations, but don't force people to do something, right? So sending out a, a message that says mandatory video on during this meeting isn't actually helpful. Um, what I do think is helpful is sending out a either a video or an email communication or a couple communications beforehand, setting the expectations for what this meeting is going to be like. And if it's a recurring meeting, you can do this once and set those cultural expectations. But I like to send out a record and send out a video beforehand that says, Hey, everybody, um, come ready to have your video and microphone off. This is going to be interactive. It's not going to be me just talking at you. And there's going to be multiple times where we'll take video breaks when we're uh, listening. So if you want to bring an apple and you want to eat that, etc., feel free to do that. But uh, coming ready with your video on and mic on, you'll have a much more fun, fueling, engaged experience that you'll actually get more out of. Right, do you see how that intention is, or that expectation is kind of framed from their benefit rather than, hey, can you turn the video on for me so that you're engaged, right? Number three, 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 number three, as uh, Priya Parker says in her book, The Art of Gathering, do meet for purpose, don't meet for time. More often than not, we design our meetings to go from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Instead, I would invite you to get really clear about your intention for that meeting and meet for purpose rather than for time. And if you wanna take this to the next level right at the outset of that meeting and maybe even before, be sure to share out that intention so it's crystal, crystal clear. If it's an outcome-focused intention, be crystal clear on what you want to happen in that time. And if you finish it 20 minutes early, then you've just given yourself the gift of time. In a culture uh, where we all have way too much to do in too little time, you may have just created 20 minutes for a whole group of people to go get something done. And so meet for purpose, not for time. And in order to do that, you have to actually take a minute and get clear on why are we meeting? As opposed to halfway through the meeting, having everybody wondering why this meeting wasn't just an email. Number four comes from a brilliant guy in Australia named Mark Collard, and uh, it is do Start unofficially. Do not reward people for being late. Typically, we set a meeting time, uh, start time of 11 a.m. and we wait until everybody shows up and we kind of just hang out until everybody's there. The idea of an unofficial start is something that uh, starts a few minutes before the official start time of the meeting, goes a few minutes after, and it's designed to immediately purposefully engage people. So there are lots of examples of this. I really love to hold up a question right at the beginning, even with a, either small or a big meeting, hold up a question to the camera and invite people to respond to that question either in the chat or by unmuting and sharing. Just start the conversation. Ideally, the it sparks purposeful engagement as well. So choosing a question that also relates or warms people up to the purpose and intention for that meeting. Now, 
an unofficial start also does offer understanding for people being late, because especially virtually, you've got the commute from the kitchen to the living room through the pile of kids, and the Wi-Fi is lagging, and you need to restart your computer to update to version 2.758 whatever that is, so offers understanding, but you know, time is really precious. It's a non-renewable resource. And so if you've got people together on the call, feel free to not just wait there, start immediately and create um, some of that organic uh, connection that does happen in person and usually doesn't happen uh, virtually. Sometimes we sacrifice um, efficiency for connection. And so unofficial start says, oh, we can do both. Let's be efficient with our time and also have a chance to connect right at the outset. Number five, use breakouts. So even if you've only got a team of five, use breakouts. Don't do breakouts just because, right? So do breakouts, don't do breakouts just because. Just because there's a button on Zoom and on another platform that allows you to split into smaller groups virtually, um, the breakouts only really work when you do it with intention. If I'm gonna split people out and have them talk with each other, which is a great way to make use of time, by the way, because if you split into three breakouts, you're basically having three meetings at once, brains are working more collaboratively, and then you can bring people back. And I always advise that um, if you split people out into all these disparate clicks, where you, you can't hear what's going on, exactly what's happening, I recommend doing something to bring people back into one larger community. And so that could be as easy as everybody coming back from breakouts and saying, uh, what is something really valuable that you heard in those conversations that you'd love to just kick out or popcorn out to the group? Simple question like that can take this uh, intimate conversation and harvest the knowledge and share it with the collective. It's a great way to distribute information very quickly, a great way to invite and design for contribution rather than consumption. So use breakouts, but don't do them just because you can. Make sure the intention of that breakout is really, really clear before you hit that button to split people up. Before we go to the next one, I just wanna practice something that I always invite folks to do, which is check in with your group. If you've gotten to X point in the meeting and you haven't said, hey, on a scale of um, this meeting is going really well. It's exactly what I had hoped it would be to, oh my gosh, this is terrible. We should all leave right now. Where are you at? And just get that little thumbometer. Or if you don't have video in the chat, on a scale of 10, this is the best meeting I've ever been in, to a one, this is easily the worst meeting I've ever been in. Where are you at? And as the leader or facilitator in that moment, if you've got a bunch of fours, fives, sixes, pause. Take a full pause with the content and just check in with the group and say, hey, in the chat or verbally, can you just let me know what can we do to bump that number up? What can we do to turn that dial so that this meeting is really valuable? Because if you're continuing to meet and people are like, eh, you're actually wasting their time and your own in that meeting. And so it's a great opportunity to check in and make some adjustments, kind of correct, course correct so that you can be having the conversations that the group collectively needs to have. Number six, do use analog visuals, not just because they're cool, but because they actually help people connect with you. Don't screen share the whole time. Please don't screen share the whole time. When you screen share on any virtual platform, it maximizes content and minimizes connection and engagement. And so even if you do have a deck to share, screen share for a bit, but design breaks where you're gonna unscreen share and invite some contribution. So uh, design a moment where you stop screen sharing and then hold up a quote to the group and invite their reactions and response. So hold up that quote and just invite people to unmute and share their immediate response, thought, reaction when they, when they see that, right? Take a pause for that contribution. And so using analog visuals, by the way, our brain is designed to encode visuals and experiential data into long-term memory and language and numbers into short-term. And so if you're able to use a visual, whether it's a, a very small visual to just spark some joy um, or a very big visual to spark some joy, Using uh, that analog visual adds this um, element and actually makes us more human, right? Because we're used to in Zoom just having this little box of pixels. And so when we bring things from outside that box and share them with the group, it's like we're introducing people to parts of ourselves and parts of our humanity. And it's a really, really useful tool, not only educationally, but from an engagement and connection perspective as well. Number seven, 
Do close intentionally. Don't rush the end. So often we meet for time, we get to a few minutes before the top of the hour and we're like, oh shoot, we didn't finish. Let's quickly get to the calendars and try to find another time to meet. You know, I met a, a woman who was about half my height, all white hair, had a couple of years on me. And she introduced herself as a professional storyteller. And I asked her what her number one tip for telling really great stories is or was. And uh, she said, I got it, easy. All you have to do is know the first sentence that you're going to say and the last sentence that you're going to say. It's like, oh, that is so uh, brilliant. And I think the virtual meeting variation or adaptation of that is know the first experience you're going to start with. May that perhaps be an unofficial start or connection before content and know the last experience that you're going to close with. So inviting, and I invite people to um, end with the group's words and contribution rather than their own inspirational, motivational message. And so that could be just saying, uh, think about one word that describes and encapsulates uh, one thing you're still thinking about after this meeting and just unmute and everybody popcorn it out. Or in the chat, in all caps, type one takeaway that you absolutely don't want to forget one month from now, right? So some closing exercise, doesn't have to take a long time, some closing to really deliberately end on a high. You can check out one of our other videos um, that describes an exercise called Group Anthem that unpacks this idea of uh, really purposeful closings. Now, if you liked any of the uh, visuals or the questions that I was holding up, um, they came from this lovely little connection toolkit, which we've designed to amplify connection, belonging, and trust. And so if you wanna do that in your meetings, we created a free downloadable digital version of the toolkit where there's uh, printable and, and digital versions of the cards along with uh, an excerpt from our book, Ask Powerful Questions, which went off and became a number one Amazon bestseller, along with a whole bunch of other resources to help make connection and engagement easy in your own meetings. I hope this list of seven do's and don'ts makes a huge difference in your meeting. If there's a way that I can help contribute to more impactful meetings at your organization, drop me a line in uh, at the link below. Hope to see you in cyberspace sometime soon. Have an awesome day. Oh, oh and there's videos here. If you liked this, you'll love the videos that are hanging out right here.